Hello and welcome to this latest video in the OCR GCSE Computer Science series. Uh, this lesson looks at something called a trace table. Um, so on your screen you can see an example of some computer code and then how we might use a trace table to uh, check what our algorithm is going to be doing at any given point in time. This is the uh, fourth lesson, uh, trace tables, and this forms part of the 2.1 algorithms section of Unit 2 Algorithms and Programming. In terms of our bigger picture, uh, as I said, this is the fourth lesson in the uh, 2.1 algorithms part of the course. There are five elements to Unit 2, um, and this is quite early on um, in terms of our progress through this unit. You will be pleased to know that this is a relatively short lesson looking at the concept of trace tables. Uh, by the end, you're going to understand what a trace table is. You're going to be able to create a trace table of your own, and you're going to be able to think about and explain the advantages of using a trace table when testing a computer program. So to start us off, given the first slide that you saw, uh, pause the video at this point and have a go at answering the three questions on your screen. What is a trace table? What do you think they might be used for? And then what do you think the advantages might be? Pause the video at this point and move on when you are ready. So a trace table is used to check the output and status of an algorithm uh, for a variety of different input values at a variety of different points in time. As always, that will make slightly more sense when we look at an example. Um, so when we test a complex uh, algorithm, uh, it's sometimes necessary to check our program with a number of different inputs. If we're creating a program to work out whether numbers are even or not, just checking the number six probably isn't good enough in terms of our testing. We're going to want to check with a range of different numbers, uh, high numbers, low numbers, even numbers and odd numbers. Let's think about the algorithm uh, or the formula x equals y plus 2. Our trace table would look something like this example on the board. In y we would put a number of test values 13, 25 and 1200. We would then run our program and check, well, is x, is the answer um, where we would expect that to be? And we can see from this example, yeah, that looks fairly right. Uh, x equals y plus 2, 13 plus 2 does indeed equal 15. So let's imagine we are given uh, this pseudocode. Input num, while num less than 500, output num times 2, end while. Uh, now we would think around uh, what different inputs we might get there and there are obviously a range of different numbers we might have input. We're going to think around is our num less than 500 column true or false and we would then think about filling in our output column. Now the numbers you try aren't fixed. If it is an algorithm with only five potential input values you you'd do all five. Clearly this one's got at least 500 uh, numbers that could be input. So we've just doubled them going down the left hand side, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. And to test your program we would run this at any given point and check well what are we expecting to see in our output and then what do we actually see in our output column. Okay it's time for you to give one of these a go. So let's imagine the following pseudocode, i equals zero, 4i to 5 as num, x equals num minus 1, print num times 4. Complete the trace table in your book. Uh, so we get the i column has been given to you, and for each instance of i, you need to complete, well, what's the value of x going to be, and what's going to be output from this program. Pause the video at this point, and complete that trace table in your book. So here are your answers for this one. Uh, x is going to be minus 1 the first time round, going up to 4 at the end, and we're then multiplying that by 4. So our output, the only print we're given, that's the only output from this program, is our numeric value, minus 4 to 16, uh, going down the right-hand column. A slightly tougher example here. Uh, i equals 0 for i to 5 as num. If num is even, uh, print even, z equals i plus 5, print z, end 4. 
So we've got a couple of columns there. We've got if num is even, and now that's going to be a true or false value. Is that true or not, or should it be returning true or false? Z, and then what's going to be output. Now, it may be that in certain columns you are going to have more than one output. Pause the video at this point and give that trace table a go. Here is the answer for that one. Uh, the if num is even should be fairly straightforward. It's true for 0, 2 and 4 and it's false for the others. Z is then calculated. Now if the number was true, we've got two outputs. We've got the word even and then the uh, variable of Z. If not, we've just got the variable Z being printed out. In Python, it would automatically put it on two different rows as those are two different print statements. If you put even and five on the same row, that's not, not a problem at all. Uh, it depends on which high level language you are considering when you look at your uh, pseudocode. Uh, another example, imagine we're given the following pseudocode. Now in this example, I haven't given you a trace table. When you're doing this one, I only want you to come up with a maximum of six or seven rows going down the page. Don't go too far because you may find there's a, uh, a potential issue when you start working through this code. Pause the video at this point. First of all, design your trace table and then complete that one. Now, I imagine you probably found there was an issue with this algorithm. OK, and this is exactly why we would use a trace table. Because of the way the formula is working in uh, adding x and y together, but then dividing the uh, answer by 2, we're not going to get to a point where x is above 10. Um, because it's dividing by 2 each time, so that's going to go on kind of forever. And the value of x is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, but very, very, very slowly. So if we were wondering why, uh, why that while loop uh, looped forever, a trace table would allow us to see the, the issue in our code and the fact that that formula is never ever going to work. So a trace table is used to enable us to spot issues in our code, either that our code is giving an answer we don't uh, expect, or to allow us to narrow down on right, where is my algorithm going wrong? Where is my, or why is my while loop never ending? And this would be an example of that. So, as I said, a relatively short lesson today. Uh, a trace table is used to check the output of an algorithm at various points in time. Uh, you should be able to create one of those from some given pseudocode. Uh, why are they useful? Well, it allows us to spot errors in our code um, or outputs that aren't quite as we expected them to be. Hopefully you found that uh, video lesson useful. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please post those either onto Google Classroom or into the comments section below. Thank you very much.